Hi, I've got a real interesting video for you today. You know I've done a lot of videos on oscilloscope probes, uh, passive, uh, active, uh, high voltage uh, differential probes. I've got a video on how uh, they work and reverse engineerings and teardowns and stuff like that. But one that I haven't done a video on is one of these new optical fiber probes. And thank you very much Mixig uh, for sending this in, even though I think the uh, label's upside down. Anyway, check out this. It is their latest um, optical fiber probe. And this is the fourth and most advanced type of oscilloscope probe and also the most expensive uh, as type of oscilloscope probe you can get. Now the first type of probe is your regular passive probe. You, you know, one to one, 10 to one uh, switchable or times 10 fixed uh, passive probe. They're your general purpose probes, typically up to, you know, 500 megahertz, something uh, like that. Although there are some very special ones that might be able to scrape it up to one gig, but basically, yeah, nah. Um, and the next step up is your um, active FET probes. Uh, basically, these are very high frequency probes, very low input capacitance, and they've got an active uh, FET amplifier on the input here. And uh, you can't, these are only used for very low voltages and uh, basically single ended or uh, differential, but very high speed stuff. So if you want to measure, like, you know, high speed buses with great signal fidelity, uh, your active FET probes, they can go up to, you know, gigahertz, tens of gigahertz even. So all your high frequency ones are your active FET probes. And then your next type, of course, is your high voltage differential probe. And I have done uh, several videos on these, um, like uh, actually reverse engineering these, explaining how they work and testing them and doing uh, common mode uh, voltage tests and stuff like that. So you want to use the high voltage differential probe when you basically want to measure high voltage stuff or things that are uh, raised above uh, signal ground so that like a uh, main switch mode uh, power supply, high side driving uh, transistors in you know uh, power supplies and stuff like that. You can't do that with your active probe or your regular passive probe because you'll blow up your oscilloscope. I've done a video on that too. So uh, yeah, high voltage differential probes an essential bit of uh, kit. But unfortunately, these are not high bandwidth. This is one of the highest bandwidth ones on the market. You know, 70 megahertz, you can get, you know, 100. But as valuable and as great as a high voltage and essential as a high voltage differential uh, probe is, you should have one if you're doing any sort of uh, mains uh, work or any sort of, you know, higher voltage uh, power supply uh, type stuff. Um, unfortunately, their common mode rejection ratio can be a problem when you're talking about more modern uh, switch mode power supply designs and really high voltage and, and uh, like high energy physics research and doing all sorts of advanced stuff. And this is where you need one of these newfangled fiber optic probes. And thank you very much Mixig for sending this in. Um, these these are state of the art tech and it basically uh, contains the equivalent of a like a high frequency active uh, FET, FET probe. This particular model from Mixig can go up to one gigahertz. So quite high frequency. The one we've got here is only uh, 200 meg, but they do make models that go up that high. So it basically is an active FET probe front end like this, but instead of just being connected via a coax and having a common uh, mains earth, this cable here is fiber optic. There is no metallic conductors in here at all and it uh, gets its power for the head over the fiber optic. So it's powered from this uh, fiber optic uh, transmitter here and also receiver. And this plugs into your oscilloscope and it can actually send power over the fiber optic uh, to power the active FET a front end like this, but it then sends the signal back also via the uh, fiber optic in the analog uh, form. They don't uh, sample it, it's all done in the analog uh, domain. So they transfer power in this direction and they can get signal back in this direction and you get complete galvanic isolation. In this case, up to 60 kilovolts uh, isolation because you've got no metallic conductors between your oscilloscope and your probe. It's it's almost like magic. So you get the advantages of the high bandwidth uh, FET probes with the advantages of the high uh, common mode rejection ratio of uh, your high voltage differential probe. It's the best of both worlds. But these are unfortunately incredibly uh, expensive, but these are essential bit of kit as I'll show you in today's video. We're going to do some experiments and it's going to be amazing. 
So there's a couple of other companies that manufacture these optical fiber probes. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, the Tech ISO view might have been uh, the first uh, one, the first famous one. Anyway, but Mixig have now come out with this SIG Offit uh, probe, and it goes anywhere from 100 megahertz up to one gig uh, model. So we've got the uh, 200 megahertz uh, model here, which is more than good enough uh, th for the experience that we want to do. Now this is Mixig's uh, comparison between uh, the LaCroix uh, DL ISO the Tektronix ISO view and Mixig offered. So always take these manufacturers' uh, comparisons with a grain of salt. But anyway, this is what they've got. Um, it starts, yes, then <laughs> they're pretty pricey at $23.99. Uh, that's Yankee Bucks. Um, but the Tektronix ISO view for the uh, 200 megahertz one starts at $10,800. So the one we've got here is uh, $3,700 US dollars as opposed to the $10,800 Tektronix one. And the LaCroix uh, DSO is even higher but that's a higher bandwidth uh, minimum there but the amazing thing about these and the difference between your regular high voltage uh, differential probes and these optical fiber probes is that these have a massive massive common mode voltage range the 200 megahertz version that we've got here 106 db <laughs> common mode rejection ratio. I've done a video uh, actually demonstrating this. I'll link it in. I won't go through, you know, the nuts and bolts of common mode uh, rejection ratio here, but that is absolutely enormous. And it will do that for the full 200 megahertz bandwidth and compare that to Mixig's uh, high voltage uh, differential uh, probe, which is almost identical specs to my uh, EV blog HVP uh, 70 uh, probe. And they're great probes. They're great for high voltage use. So, you know, they've got decent common mode rejection ratio, but you'll notice at, at one megahertz, it's minus 50 dB and you go up to 10 megahertz, it's minus 40 dB and it just gets worse and worse and worse. So if you've got a one megahertz uh, switching power supply, for example, and you're trying to measure the high side of that, as we'll do today in today's uh, experiment, stay around for it because it's fantastic. This 100 dB makes a massive difference, like game changing difference. So we're going in today's video, we're going to compare this Mixig optical fiber probe to a, a you know a pretty much one of the best high voltage uh, differential probes on the market, and watch this blow this out of the water for the specific use uh, case that we're going to look at today. So we'll have a very brief look at this. The main advantage of this one over the uh, Tech and La the LaCroix ones is it's a universal BNC interface. It can plug into any scope, uh, 50 ohm uh, output. Um, so uh, 200 megahertz, but they've got models going up to one gig. So, and it's got a built-in uh, calibration mode, which only takes a couple of seconds. Uh, whereas the other models, are, even though I haven't used them, Mixig claim that they can take up to minutes to do calibration. Because these things drift with 10 temperature and stuff like that. So you've got to be careful to actually uh, calibrate these things before you, uh, you know, take your, your uh, critical measurements, just so that you're, uh, you know, taking out DC offsets and uh, other stuff. So yeah, they've got built-in signal generators in the probe. So when you press the calibration button, it will actually run a, uh, like there's a test uh, generator in here, which should generate a signal and then it can test it and it can calibrate for any uh, offsets. But you can manually um, adjust the uh, offset here. It's got a built-in fan here. It looks like it sucks in the end uh, from over here. It gets a little bit uh, warm, but it, it's a little bit whiny. Um, it's not hugely loud, but it's notice noticeable if you're in a uh, quiet lab. But anyway, um, yeah, so this has a uh, power uh, optical fiber transmitter in it to generate, to send the power over the optical fiber here. So you can't like bend these really sharply. That's why breakable fiber cable <laughs> warranty void if you bend that sucker. So yeah, don't go bending your really expensive fiber optic probe because you can pay up to 20 grand for like the one gig bandwidth version of this. Oh, these are such sexy bits of kit. Wait until you see the demo. And in the box, I've actually got two probes, although I think it might only uh, come with one. I've got a 10 to one uh, probe here. It's an SMA uh, interface, so it's uh, flexible. So that's a 10 to one uh, probe. And I've got a uh, 500 to one as well for high voltage use. Because as I said, these are active FET inputs. 
So just like your Active Pro, don't go putting high voltage into this because you'll just blow the magic uh, smoke out of your potentially $20,000 Pro, but that'll ruin your day. But with the high attenuation uh, input, they can go up to several uh, kilovolts, no worries. And we could get a nice little desk uh, standoff so that it isolates it uh, from your bench, and I'll demonstrate that later. Then we get some MCXR connectors uh, here because this is an MCXR connector interface. It's SMA here, but the actual probe tip itself is uh, MCX. So yeah, um, the, the demo board we're gonna use today has an MMCX connector, and well, that causes a bit of problem. But anyway, we'll get around it. And because the probe is not an uh, active uh, probe interface, so it can go onto any scope, it does need uh, the 5 volt uh, USB uh, C here to power it, and it does come with a plug pack and cable to do that. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a high voltage differential probe. It does not use the differential probe architecture. I'll link in the video that I've done actually reverse engineering Mixig's uh, DP1007 differential probe. I've also uh, reverse engineered uh, the Sapphire HVP70 uh, as well. So it is not a differential architecture. It does not have the differential input, this FET input, uh, that goes into a differential amplifier configuration. It is, as I said, just like a single-ended active uh, high-frequency probe. It's very different to the high-voltage differential probe here. So let's have a look with a practical example of where you can use an optical fibre probe like this and get the advantage of the huge, massive common mode rejection, almost practically infinite common mode rejection, well not infinite, you know, 100 plus dB, common mode rejection ratio of these fibre optic uh, probes. And we'll see if we can actually get um, some advantages like this uh, compared to say a differential probe. Here's uh, the yellow one there is what a differential probe is going to look like when we're going to probe the circuit that we're going to try out in a minute and that's not the real response because it's got an extremely poor common mode rejection ratio um, of a, a regular high voltage differential probe. So, um, and look, we should be able to get a nice, beautiful response with a fiber optic probe. Let's see if it's possible. Now, one of the many useful applications for this is in real high efficiency modern power electronics, which get uh, like 99 plus percent efficiency. You're used to, yeah, your regular DC to DC converters get in like, you know, 85, 90 percent will be a good one, maybe into the 92, 93 percent range. But uh, the more modern ones, uh, especially in higher, really higher power, really dense uh, brick uh, designs, can get over 99 percent efficient. And the way they do this is using modern. Uh, MOSFETs called uh, gallium nitride semiconductors or GANs as we'll uh, refer to them here because it's it's like G-A-N GAN uh, power transistors. Here's an Infineon application note. Um, so we're going to actually look at one of their cool GAN uh, gallium uh, nitride power transistors here. And one of the advantages, if we go look at the topology, we won't go in, in, into detail, but it's basically a there's no PN uh, traditional PN junction in your GAN uh, transistor. So it's basically a planar device, which means it basically flows on the surface. It doesn't, uh, the current flows on the surface. It doesn't flow into the PN junctions. And hence you can get lower uh, conduction resistance of these things, which make them more efficient at higher voltages um, as well. So they work very differently to a regular uh, MOSFET, but we won't go into the details. So here's another substrate uh, diagram of how a uh, GAN device works like this. And basically um, you're gonna get like like really high efficiencies. I mean, check, check this out, right? Here's a power factor correction uh, board, 2.5 kilowatts in this tiny little uh, form factor like this. But look at this, we're getting, you know, 99% uh, plus efficiency on stuff like this. So, you know, this is how you can get really dense modern things and you get huge EV charges and you can get, you know, a really efficient power bricks and stuff like that because they're using these newfangled uh, gallium nitride and there's other uh, types of modern uh, power transistors as well. And they're called a high electron mobility uh, transistor as well. So a HEM. T. So if you hear the word hemped or GAN hemped, something like that, it's just basically, yeah, high electron mobility. It means more betterer. It means uh, lower on, on resistance, 
and lower on resistance in a switching converter, whatever it is, whether it's power factor correction, it's boost, it's buck, it's, it's whatever you're doing, um, CPK converters or whatever, then you're going to get much higher efficiency due to the lower effective on resistance. Yeah, I know this is marketing blurb for Infinium, but they're one of the leaders in these uh, GAN devices and they've got this cool uh, demo board. But look, you can basically use them in the uh, power factor correction circuit, the resonant uh, converter here and the synchronous rectifier on the output. So not only can you use them as transistors, you can use them as very effective diodes uh, as well. So anyway, we are going to be using one of these 600 volt cool GAN, um, that's just their trademark thing, but gallium nitride uh, power transistor in a uh, push-pull um, half-bridge uh, configuration or a uh, totem pole uh, switching configuration. We're not going to like do a full uh, converter, but uh, basically, yeah, we're going to use uh, one of these bad boys. It does have a Kelvin connection in here, by the way, for the uh, source down here. So anyway, we're going to use one of these um, application boards, uh, which you can get really cool. Um, they only cost about 60 bucks or something like that. If you want to uh, play around with these things too, it's got two of these uh, GAN uh, transistors. So we've got this half bridge uh, configuration like this. So we've got one on the top and one on the bottom. So this is a basically a totem pole output. And here's the uh, drive circuit for it. Don't worry, it looks a bit complicated. I won't go into all the details, but how you can achieve like 99% plus efficiency with these things is by a careful driving and this is what we want to monitor because so these can go up to 600 volts but today we're due to the equipment limitations we're only going to go up to 300 volts and it's basically impossible with a regular uh, probe let alone a regular differential probe to actually measure the gate drive of a high side power transistor like this doesn't matter whether it's gallium nitride or anything else it's just that gallium nitrides are a modern application uh, for it because what you need to measure of course is the gate source voltage like this on a power transistor and uh, that's why we've got this uh, connector here to actually do this but the problem is you can't do that when this source here is switching like hundreds of volts up to like 600 volts or even higher um, you just can't do that the common mode is just you get that common mode if you're switching at megahertz uh, for example which high efficiency converters are you've got this huge common mode signal actually bouncing up and down hundreds of volts and your regular high voltage differential probes even the best of the best ones can't handle that sort of thing and hopefully we'll get a demo of that today Here's the complete schematic for the demo board that we're going to use. We've got our half bridge uh, GAN over here, and then we've got these two uh, driver chips. Have a look at the schematic in a minute. But these are actually isolated. So there's electrical isolation inside the chips here, okay? And they're powered uh, from VDD and VSS here, and they're powered from this uh, isolated um, boost converter over here. So we've got like five volts uh, into the board here, and then it powers um, the drive side of the MOSFETs. And then into our half bridge here, we're going to feed in there and here, we're going to feed in up to 300 uh, volts and we can vary that to see the effect of uh, the common mode rejection ratio. And just to ensure that uh, you don't get what's called shoot through, which is both of these transistors turned on at the same time, because you don't want to short out your like 300 or 600 volt power supply that's capable of like kilowatts or something. You're like, no, it's going <laughs> to release the magic smoke. So um, uh, what uh, this does is this uh, basically we've got a, an adjustable, there's a little uh, uh, trim pot uh, here and here, which you can adjust the uh, off time uh, of the transistor. So this basically, um, we've got a a 50 ohm uh, input here which you can drive from a signal generator and that will just uh, invert the signal and then add some delay here uh, to ensure that these transistors it's impossible to have both of these transistors on at the same time so you can just adjust the uh, dead time of the gate drive and then we've got a 500k load with some capacitors we may not use that today i'm not actually going to use a load so it's not going to be uh, like an inductive load or it's not going to be a boost configuration we're just going to switch these transistors off and on uh, at a fast rate like one megahertz and we should be able to see uh, the effect of being able to probe because this is what we want to probe today we want to be able to probe this gate drive because when you're developing these circuits if you can't measure the gate drive is like 
critical. I won't go into all the details of driving uh, gallium uh, nitride GAN transistors, but I'll include some application notes down below if you really want to know about that sort of stuff. But it's real tricky. If you're, you know, shooting for 99% efficiency, you need to get your gate drive right and you need to be able to probe it. And you can't do that with even the best high voltage differential probe. So we'll try that. You can do the low side down here because this is basically um, ground right and there we go it goes through the kelvin connection there right so you can measure that gate drive but this high side when this node here of this source is switching by you know hundreds and hundreds of volts at one megahertz <laughs> it's gonna ruin your day so here's these uh, specific GAN drivers. And you can see here, there's actually isolation inside the chip here. So uh, yeah, basically you feed in your PWM uh, signal here, but it basically um, it's got to go over this electrical uh, galvanically isolated uh, interface. And then you've got another uh, totem pole uh, driver in here to actually uh, drive your transistor here. And you need one of these driver tip chips per transistor. And the output here not only drives the gate, but it also uh, drives the source as well. And this is why you use these GAN devices in uh, really high efficiency converters, because you can really drive them in very specific ways, targeted specifically uh, for your application. So you've got to provide that isolated uh, supply here for actually driving the GAN transistor. Okay, I'll go through the setup here. We've got our uh, demo board here and it's raised up with the uh, Panavice here. And we've also got our, uh, our optical fiber probe on its uh, little stand. There's a reason it comes with a stand because if you've got your board laying on your bench, even though this is a non-conductive uh, bench and you've got your probe down on the bench um, as well, you can get increased capacitive coupling. And it's actually working at the moment. And uh, have a look at the switching uh, waveform here and watch what happens if I change it down towards the bottom like that. You'll notice there's much more ringing here, right? So you've got to keep this up off the ground like that. That's why they supply the stand. And to befit our state-of-the-art uh, optical fiber probe, we've got the no less uh, state-of-the-art Schwartz MX04 uh, scope here. So I'll be operating that uh, remotely. I've got a 5-volt uh, power supply here, and that just uh, powers the 5 volts in uh, for the board. Let me turn that voltage down. Otherwise, I should be using my takeaway protection container here. Um, highly recommended. Made in Australia. Thank you very much. We've got the optical fiber probe connected into uh, channel one here and I've run a calibration on that. We can just run that again, bungo, um, and it's all temperature stabilized and everything. Next on uh, channel two here, I've got my uh, high voltage uh, probe. Probably could get away with a, a regular uh, times 10 passive uh, probe, but just to be on the safe side, I'll use my 100 to one uh, probe here. So that's on channel two and that's across the uh, H bridge um, output and uh, the low side. So effectively uh, the ground here. And I've got a 220K resistor load in here, just going between the H-bridge output and uh, ground down here. Um, I'm not gonna do any fancy uh, load today. I'm just gonna put something on it, just so we have something there. And we can, of course, uh, mains earth common that uh, low side because um, everything else is uh, floating. So no problems whatsoever there. We're not gonna blow up our scope. Done a video on that. And then either side of here, I've got my uh, 300 volt high voltage input, which we can adjust, which is coming from this Xantrex power supply. And this is the uh, fan noise you can hear here. Um, so yeah, I can just adjust the voltage. I can go up to uh, 300 and it, it's a 300 volt four amp uh, supply. I can go up to 311, no worries. And on channel three here, EEV blog HVP uh, 70 high voltage differential probe coming back in stock uh, in September. They've had a uh, parch shortage. Anyway, um, it's it's an awesome, it's probably one of the best in, uh, high voltage differential uh, probes on the market, designed and manufactured by uh, Sapphire. And we're gonna use that to actually probe the exact same point, not at the same time, don't do it at the same time, but uh, uh, the same point as our optical fiber probe here, just so that we can show, hopefully, a difference between uh, the common mode rejection of an optical fiber probe and pretty much uh, the best differential, uh, high voltage differential probe on the market and how this, as good as it is, is not the tool to use to measure the high side 
with a 300 volt switch in at one megahertz, which is what we're going to have here. All right, let's control our Roden Schwartz scope remotely. I love this via the uh, Ethernet. The software uh, interf web interface is just uh, fantastic. This is just working as a uh, in a web browser here. So we can get the full screen or we can turn on the uh, front panel here, whichever we prefer. Let's go for the front panel. Now, what we've got here is uh, the green waveform here. As you can see, uh, 40 volts uh, per division here so we can go up to 320 volts this is our h bridge um, output okay so where i've limited the uh, probe here so we can go in there and oh we can look, look at this it even shows the transparency look at that we can adjust the transparency so with both of these channels i've actually uh, bandwidth limited these uh to the probe uh bandwidth because well there's no point going higher than that you're just going to get uh increased uh, noise so um so our green waveform here i've I just turned it on enough it works with no um we still get the switching waveform here the yellow one uh, with no uh, voltage at all I can com completely switch off my high voltage supply we still get the switching waveform we're still driving the MOSFET but of course there's nothing there to switch okay so our output uh, here so we're currently set it very low so I've set it to uh, 40 volts so it's just switching off and on now we're generating a signal here we're generating a uh, 1 megahertz uh, 5 volt peak to peak 2.5 volt offset so just a TTL signal in with a 50% duty cycle and we can play with that later. So the channel one here, we uh, let's switch over and we can see the uh, scale here. Uh, you can see that it's not much. It's like, you know, six, seven volts uh, peak to peak, something like that. That's what you'd expect when you're driving the MOSFET. But remember, this is the differential voltage against the gate and the source of that high side power transistor, the one which is currently elevated at well it's jumping between 0 and 40 volts okay so it's continually switching at 1 megahertz you can see the schematic up above the uh, waveform at is at, at the source of that high side power transistor so we're measuring the gate source voltage so that source is continually swinging and that is our uh, problem the greater the voltage the more your uh, common mode rejection ratio needs to be the higher your common mode rejection ratio of your probe needs to be in order to eliminate any effects of that switching output from that high side gate source uh, measurement here. So anyway, this is the classic uh, gate drive uh, waveform. This is exactly what we'd expect. The on period is uh, from here over to here. Yeah, you can see my cursor oh, over to here. And that ringing uh, that we get in here, you'll see this uh, change a bit, but it's not, it's not a huge amount, but uh, uh, that will be due to uh, that little extra length of uh, coax that we had in there. If I had the proper little um, RF adapter in there, then that would likely almost certainly uh, go away and we get a nicer waveform. But anyway, when the output switches here, we get a little bit of ringing on the output. That's because of the uh, that longer uh, lead that we used on that high voltage uh, probe. Once again, if I probe that a bit better, we'd uh, 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 tighten up the uh, measurement on there. But um, yeah, for the purposes of today's experiment, that doesn't matter. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust that power supply from 40 volts all the way up to uh, 300, uh, just over 300 volts. And we're going to see if that yellow waveform, the gate source voltage, actually changes. If changing that source uh, voltage and switching between a much higher uh, amplitude um, actually changes the measurement on that yellow uh, gate source high side power transistor. So let's adjust it. We're at 40 volts at the moment. And here we go. Right, we're going to go up and look, it's basically that yellow waveform is not changing at all, at all. There's a little bit of, you know, switching um, stuff, which is changing a little bit, but basically we still get the waveform. Look, we're all the way up to 311 volts and it basically that yellow waveform hasn't changed at all. We're still getting proper signal measurement uh, fidelity on that waveform. And that source voltage is switching up and down at a frequency of one megahertz from zero to 400 volts. And that optically isolated probe is doing the job and we're not basically, look, it's it, look, there's no difference at all. <laughs> I can't <laughs> like overestimate how difficult this measurement would be without this optical fiber probe. In fact, Let's try it. Let's hook up one of the best high voltage differential probes and see the difference. Oh no! I hit the stupid preset button and screwed all my settings. Damn it! 
What I've done now is created a uh, reference waveform, that channel one switching waveform that we have with the optical fiber probe. I've saved that as a reference waveform. So that's the white one. So we'll be able to compare it to uh, the high voltage differential probe. And that's a very good use of uh, those reference waveforms for your scope. If you've never used them before, this is what they're good for. You'll notice now that we're actually getting so much uh, ringing and crap on that uh, different from that differential uh, probe that uh, like we can't trigger off this. So I'm going to have to choose a different source. I'm going to have to choose the I'm going to have to choose the uh, actual um, output uh, waveform down here. Now we can see it. Look at that orange waveform. Okay, we can increase the brightness here. We increase the intensity. There. Look at this. The orange waveform. Okay, it's the same. It's the same. This is the best high one of the, one of the best high voltage differential probes on the market, and it just does not like that. And we're only switching like um, what is it, forty volts, less than for like thirty odd volts or something like that. Let's let's actually turn it up and see what happens. So let's wind it up. Watch that uh, orange waveform, okay? Look, look at how bad that's getting. Look at all the ringing. Look at this. Look at this. Right. It is absolutely atrocious. It is awful. Okay? And yeah, the probing's not absolutely ideal, but you're going to get this. You can see that how much of a major problem that is. But let's actually go down, okay? And we'll go down in frequency. And if we go down to one kilohertz switching frequency, you'll see not really a problem, right? You don't like we can, once again we can go up to all the way up to 300 volts and you don't notice any change in that uh, waveform whatsoever. So the high voltage differential probe is fine at one kilohertz, but as it goes up in frequency, your common mode rejection ratio drops, and then you get all those problems. And the whole idea of uh, these uh, using GANs and to get the high efficiency, you've got to use the high frequency. So you can't use the high voltage differential probe to measure it. You've got to use an optical fiber probe. Cool, huh? So back at one megahertz again, you can see that as we, like as the voltage gets higher at one megahertz, okay, you can't get any proper signal fidelity. Look at it compared to the white reference waveform there that we're getting with the fiber optic probe. This shows that this is the only fiber optic probes for this application. They're the only game in town. Sure, you could use some other isolated uh, scope uh, probe to do it, but then you can't. The whole idea of doing stuff like this is that you use the one scope to get uh, time reference uh, measurements on the like multi channel so you can measure um, the different stuff that's going on. And you can't use a high voltage differential probe, optical fiber probe, it's the only way to do it for this application and for many other like you know uh, high end like physics experiment applications and stuff like that and power and all these power measurement uh, applications that have high frequency high voltage switching stuff like this got to use an optically isolated probe that's what your 100 db of common mode rejection ratio does it's just it's not a problem and we can play around with the uh sig gen here so let's uh adjust this duty cycle look you know, like you've got no chance of measuring this with a differential probe. There's just too much ringing, let alone at, at, at higher voltages. All this stuff is just, <laughs> it's just going to absolutely dominate. But if we go back to our fiber optic probe here and we adjust our duty cycle, right? Look, look at how we can still see the fig signal fidelity. Look, right? It, it, you can just see everything, right? Even at like one megahertz. Switching frequency, it's just like, it's amazing. And I switched off the external high voltage supply uh, completely. You can see that on the uh, green waveform there. And this is the baseline. I've actually got both the fiber optic uh, probe and the differential probe actually plugged in at the same time. Don't recommend uh, that at, you know, for a real uh, measurement, but you can actually see the baseline uh, ring in there of the differential probe in the orange there. So it, you know, it, it's not too bad. We can do better if we actually probed it uh, better. But as you saw before, once we turned on that high voltage and then it started switching, that common mode signal started to swing on the output, which caused the uh, gate and source to just keep rising up and down, up and down, then that's where your common mode rejection ratio, your poor common mode rejection ratio. And remember, this one megahertz switching frequency, you don't uh, look at the one megahertz uh, common mode rejection mode figure, you actually have to look at um, the higher harmonic 
frequencies. That one megahertz is going to extend to tens of megahertz, even hundreds of megahertz. So the probe bandwidth uh, matters. And my high voltage differential probes only 70 meg uh, bandwidth, by the way. And these isolator probes, because they're not actually a differential uh, op amp architecture, they can actually be faster. They're like an active probe. They can go to a gigahertz or, you know, even higher. So uh, yeah, look, it's like, that's the baseline. You saw how horrible it just went purely by having that output switch the gate and source. <laughs> it's just a huge difference. Huge. So we'll quickly measure the noise here and I've set up uh, my scope here. You can see it in the top as 15-bit. Uh, so I've got the HD uh, mode enabled here, uh, 200 megahertz uh, bandwidth limit. So we're getting 15 effective bits, even though this only is only a 12-bit uh, converter. This is a really schmick scope uh, for doing these sorts of measurements. So let's have a squeeze here. Um, and I just want to show you one very nice feature. If I turn this scale down, to one millivolt per division. I've turned off the times 10 thing because we don't have the times 10 uh, probe attached. You'll notice that li these little red markers down here, see them? T in the bottom left corner there, next to the vertical scale, they indicate that we're actually overranging, even though it doesn't look like we're overranging here. And I can actually uh, turn up the intensity like this, and you can see it still doesn't look like we're overranging, but it detects any peak above or below the ADC sample range. And as long as you get one peak there, it'll like uh, set the red thing there flicker at a rate that you can visually uh, see it just to tell you that you're off scale. So I can actually uh, go in there and adjust it to two millivolts per division and we're gone now. So I just, I, I just wanted to point that out. I did a separate video on this on the, uh, uh, second channel, a little short, and I just really appreciate nice touches like that. Mwah. Beautiful, whoever implemented uh, that. And I just wanted to go zero to five megahertz bandwidth here because I wanted to show you just these little uh, switching spikes in here at 315 kilohertz. So obviously inside this thing, there's a um, switching converter and we're just getting uh, the switching noise out of that. And you can see the uh, harmonics uh, there. Can I physically drag that level down? Yes, I can. So we get the extra peaks there. Oh, isn't that nice? Um, there you are. So we can get the harmonics of that uh, switching frequency. Not a big deal. I just, it's there and I wanted to show you. And the actual uh, noise here, we've got our uh, AC noise here. I've done a whole video on that and how you've got to choose that correctly. So it eliminates the uh, DC offset here. And we're getting 782 microvolts over the full 200 megahertz bandwidth. And I've now got a 200, oh, I've now got a 333 megahertz span. And you can see at about 200 megahertz, it starts to fall off because, well, this thing only has a 200 megahertz bandwidth. So you expect uh, the bandwidth to start falling off there. But that looks pretty good, you know, at around about like 80 minus. 80 uh, dBm noise floor or something like that. So yeah, it's uh, not too shabby at all. But the reason you want this, of course, common mode rejection ratio over 100 dB, which I'm not even sure I could measure 100 dB common mode rejection ratio here in the lab. But anyway, it's it, it's huge. You've already seen the benefits. And I see very little drift in this thing uh, either. It's pretty good. So I'll switch on the cow mode now and you'll see it. Cow mode now. Boom. There we go. That was it. It's quick. And then the offset button, you can just move it. You know, if you've got a DC offset in there, you can trim it like it's it looks like it's about like 0.2 millivolts per step or something. It's really quite small. So I'm adjusting that now. And uh, you can see that the steps are really quite tiny. So yeah, it's really nice. So there you go. I hope that's given you some insight into what um, these really advanced, expensive probes uh, can do. Yeah, they're not cheap, but they're the only game in town if you want to actually develop these leading edge, high efficiency, high voltage, high frequency, high performance uh, switching products. And as I said, do like other physics research. And there's all sorts of like physics experiments that you can do, high voltage, uh, you know, isolated differential uh, stuff. And you need these fiber optic uh, probes, you need that massive common mode rejection ratio, CMRR, um, uh, like 100 dB up to like, what is it, 50, 60 kilovolts or something like that for, you know, physics research. And you wouldn't be those using those sorts of uh, voltages for, uh, you know, regular electronics uh, stuff. So really exotic uh, research, but stuff like just designing a high efficiency power brick or, you know, the newfangled EV chargers that need massive high voltages, high currents and, you know, high frequency switching, super efficient uh, converters. This is the only game in town. So thank you very much to Mixig for uh, sending this in. This is absolutely brilliant. And hopefully um, I've given you a good insight into um, how this measurement is simply not possible with the existing uh, probing stuff. It, 
It really is the only game in town. It's remarkable. Anyway, as I'll link in uh, like all sorts of application uh, notes and data sheets and all sorts of things down below. As always, you can just discuss test gear like this over on the EV blog forum. Absolute best place to do it. And if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and you can discuss down below as usual. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.